Continuous Climb Operations, or CCO, and Continuous Descent Operations, or CDO, allow arriving and departing aircraft to climb or descend continuously to the greatest extent possible. Aircraft flying CCO use optimum climb engine thrust and climb speeds until reaching their cruising levels. CCO has both noise and fuel advantages because the aircraft reach their cruising altitudes faster and therefore stay at these higher altitudes for longer, where the fuel burn is less than at the lower levels. With CDO, aircraft use minimum engine thrust, ideally from the top of descent and in a low drag configuration to the final approach fix. During CDO, the aim is to allow aircraft to descend without the need for intermediate level offs. This is good for the environment and the airline because the aircraft can spend more time at the higher cruising levels, which leads to significant reductions in fuel burn, lower emissions, lower fuel costs, and less noise pollution. Benefits of CDO Continuous Climb Operations the use of CCO and CDOs can provide substantial fuel savings and environmental benefits compared to a non-CCO or CDO operation. Cesar studies and ICAR analyzes have all previously estimated that a CDO could provide a significant fuel, emissions, savings compared to a non-CDO operation. Furthermore, CDO can contribute to a reduction in noise levels around airports, a CDO can reduce noise by 1 to 5 decibels compared to a non-CDO operation. Although the major benefits are linked to fuel savings and reductions in emissions, there are also ADC benefits provided that the airspace and procedures have been adapted to enable CCO-CDO. These include, a more efficient use of the airspace, more predictable flight paths, reductions in both pilot and controller workload, reduction in the number of RT transmissions. Nonetheless, it should be noted that if ATC were to lose the flexibility to tactically manage sequencing and arrival flows, there could be a risk of reduced capacity and efficiency. Consequently, CDO should not be achieved at the expense of safety, capacity, flight efficiency or expedition. While CDO is highly desirable, it is not to be achieved at any cost. The main benefit of a CDO and a CCO is to save fuel, of course. And for an airline, every drop of fuel counts. It's important to save money. And of course, every drop of fuel also reduces emissions. And we all know that's the maybe the most important question in our time on a global scale. So Low drag, low thrust settings, and to reduce uh, noise. Um, emissions and uh, fuel burn, of course. So we undertook an ECAC-wide study which was designed to identify what this benefit pool could be if CCO and CDO were optimized to the full extent. And the study showed that uh, the data throughout the year in 2017, if CCO and CDO were optimized, the benefit pool could be in the region of up to 350,000 tons of fuel saving which is equivalent to about 1 million tons of CO2 savings per year, which in monetary terms is equivalent to, I think, up to about 150 million euros of fuel savings per year. Now, obviously, not all of these uh, fuel savings, monetary savings, and the emission savings can be achieved, but we want, there's a big benefit pool there. And we recognize that the potential savings available are very significant, and that's why we are working together with the stakeholders now to try and optimize CCO and CDO operations as much as we can. So that's important for us to understand that everything we do is important in the end. Introduction to CCO CDO. Any course about CDO needs to address the notion of predictability. Although we can all agree on what it means, the context of the predictability, or the way in which it is ensured, is very different for a pilot or a controller. Controller view of predictability, in the following video, controllers share their understanding of predictability when doing their job. High predictability for a controller is achieved by constraining flight trajectories, because for the controller predictability is about all or most of the flights doing the same thing at the same place irrespective of what each individual flight might prefer in terms of top-off descent, rate of descent and speed. 
question is what's predictability for me as an air traffic controller and depends a little bit on the situation I suppose. If we know what the pilot's gonna do, what the aircraft's gonna do, it's easier for us to plan the traffic, uh, to plan the sequence for landing and uh, it's easier to maintain separation between a few aircrafts or two of them. Predictability for me is uh, all pilots adhering to all the restrictions, all my instructions very swiftly without questioning me, that gives me predictability. But then again, predictability, I suppose, goes both ways. And on a system level, it's, it's more important for the pilots to have predictability from us, from the ATM system. Then the challenge here is to make as much information as possible available to the flight crew so that on their side, they can optimize the climb or the descent with that information. If we can deliver that before top of descent, they can, by the help of the FMS system, make a very good plan for a flight efficient approach. So that's our main goal, to deliver predictability to the flight crew. Pilot view of predictability in the following video. Pilots share their understanding of predictability when doing their job. Predictability for flight crew is to have a full picture of the descent profile in terms of expected constraints and DTG and this will enable the flight crew to plan the optimal profile. Predictability for ATCOs is to be able to understand that flight crew and aircraft will respond to instructions in a harmonized manner to enable the provision of an optimized sequence. See, from our point of view, it's very important if the pilots know what they're going to fly, know any speed restrictions, altitude restrictions, that can all be set up prior to top of descent, brief with the other crew member, and then the aircraft will fly a CDO all the way down. Pilots will brief and they will make a plan for the descent, and the main element of the plan is the FMS, which is programmed to give the pilots a continuous descent at idle trust. Today we fly into many airports with a complex structure, several uh, arrivals and approaches and you are not given information on what to expect. The most efficient way to go from A to B is of course in a straight line. That's what we call a great circle. But it's not always possible to go in a straight line because there's terrain issues, performance uh, issues. If we have an accurate idea of that then we can program the aircraft and in turn the aircraft will give us a descent path which will be planned as an idle descent, obviously bearing in mind any altitude restrictions that we have to abide by. Uh, the idea is that at the top of descent, I will start uh, in idle trust, reduce the trust in up to idle, and then we will descend all the way until final approach to configure the aircraft for land. So that's what the optimum is and that's what the pilots will aim for. And quite often we will have to change that to what we actually, actually are going to fly. So as a pilot for continuous descent, um, I would like to program the whole approach, the whole descent into the FMS. That means I would uh, put in the expected arrival route, I would put in the uh, expected winds, temperature, q &H, uh, engine and TIs, and then the computer will calculate an optimum top of descent. The world is not perfect, we really do understand that and we will adapt on the way down. But if it changes too much or it changes from one control center to the other, that becomes a problem. And too often in real life it happens that one controller says speed up while the next one says slow down. And that really messes up our descent plan. So the more we move away from predictability, that then increases the workload on the pilots and makes it more difficult for us to be able to perform an accurate CDA. Also when we have to make an intermediate level off, um, the pilot workload goes up quite dramatically. Pilots will have to manage again the energy so they will have excess energy because of the level off so they will have to descend faster. The engine thrust has to go down and up and down again so the uh, temperature in the engines makes a difference in engine life. So it has quite a huge impact on the cost. In the end, we also lose confidence in the fact that we should aim for an idle descent. Because we know it's not going to happen. And then the effort of, a, of the, the standard pilot weakens. Instead of doing their best effort to regain the perfect profile, they said, oh, that doesn't work anyhow. So the predictability is what speed should we expect where, how many distances do we have to fly, that's really the most important.